So I recently ran a poll on my community page asking which processor I should feature next. I've been doing a lot of my high power builds in my handhelds and I felt like featuring some budget beasts again. Close to 100 votes. About three quarters of you guys voted for the 5600X, so here it is. I've been sitting on this A520M HDV for a little while. I've been meaning to test it, and I think this is a good time now. In a previous episode of my series Face Off, I compared the A620, B650, and X670E for the 7000 series chips and found there's not much difference in gaming performance between the three boards. And I'm expecting to see kind of the same results on the 5000 boards, but I want to see the data to prove that. So I got the box opened up and backplate, SATA cable, manual and CD. <laughs> I didn't even know they still make these things. There's an M2 screw there and I took out the board. Really nicely designed. I mean for a $67 board, I'm not really asking for much more. It's well built. It's got all the ports I need. Doesn't really have all the extra bells and whistles, but again, at that price, I'm not really expecting that. So I took out my open bench table BC1 V1 Mini, the red one, of course, and got my board mounted. I loaded up my 5600X and I put in 16 gigs of Samsung BDI RAM. These are white Oloy blade sticks rated at 4000 CL14. I can't find these anywhere these days. I've got a deep cool AG400 black with a 120 millimeter push pull fan configuration. Handling the graphics, I'm going to be pairing it with a 7900 XT. This is an ASRock reference card. And I just want to see how far the CPU can go. Obviously, the GPU is a little further ahead than the rest of the hardware here. And for storage, I've got an Inland Gen 3 M2 NVMe SSD. All right, so here it is on streets. My RAM is running at 3733 CL14. F clock is at 1867, meaning it's at one to one. And what else? Uh, I'm undervolted, minus 30. You can't tune PBO on the A520 through the BIOS, but if you use PBO2 tuner, like in my 5800X3D undervolting video, then you can manually undervolt it through software. So. Make sure you check out that video if you haven't seen it. The link is in the video description below. This is the three minute easy undervolting video for the 5800X3D. That undervolting tool works for this processor as well. So I'm hovering between 60 to 80 depending on the area and it's playable. With 16 gigs of RAM, I'm not really complaining. I'm not even sure if adding RAM will improve the performance here. I think it's a matter of cash. So I'll be doing further testing. Like I said earlier, I tested the A620 versus B650 versus X670E. I plan to do a similar face-off with the 5000 series motherboards, the A520, the X570, and the B550. I also have a B450, X470, I don't have an A420 if that even exists, but I will be putting up a lot of motherboards for a comparison and make sure you check back for that one. I'll be working on it and uploading it as soon as it's finished. All right, so this is where I'm gonna drop off and let the rest of the footage roll. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or hit me up on my Discord server. And as always, thank you for joining me and supporting my dream by viewing my content, commenting on it, liking my videos, being part of my community. I appreciate all of it and you guys are all legends. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.
Куда пошел? 